Year four pupils at St Lawrence Primary in Feltham have been using some 21st century technology as an introduction to an ancient world. The children are just a fortnight into a 10-week scheme of work on ancient Greece, which will include a museum trip. Images like these are already captivating them. In preparation for their trip, they've been exploring an online resource to choose artefacts at the British Museum which will best answer their questions. And now it's time to examine these Greek pots for real. What we tend to encourage here at the museum is, is for teachers to think about trying to utilise their strengths as teachers and their talents as teachers within the museum and just to think about the museum visit as almost like an extended lesson in a peculiar classroom. Do you recognise this pot? Yeah. It's got a picture of it in the classroom. What were the people doing on that pot? Excellent. Yes, he's ploughing the field. So what does that tell you about the man? What's his job? He's a farmer, that's right. This museum visit near the start of Year 4's study of ancient Greece is integral to teacher Bernadette Solomon's scheme of work. She believes the topic lends itself well to a cross-curricular approach. These Greek objects will inspire a whole range of classroom activities. Most of us, I think, follow the QCA documents on what children should be covering in history and geography and art. And where we can, we relate it because it, first of all, it makes more sense to the children. It gives them a more global view of, of the subject rather than um, that this is just art without connecting the two. So what might you think that pot is used for? It's used for the collecting the beginnings. It could be olives, so it could also be... So to clubs, and we've got three visual clues... At the museum, the pupils also attend a workshop on Greek myths. The focus is on visual clues found in Greek art. OK, brilliant. Now, you're going to do the work. You've got two pictures of Athena. And to work out the visual clues for Athena, you have to look at the two pictures and look at what's the same in both pictures. Okay. Children what compare similar pictures on Greek pots in order to work out symbols for different characters and stories. She's got a helmet, fantastic. And you see these things around the edge of the cloak? Can you see them? Snakes. She wears this special snaky cloak which protects her from weapons. And there's one other weapon that she's got, the same in both pictures as well. OK. The shield? Uh, hold on. Has she got a shield in both pictures? Have a look. No. No. <laughs> she's got a shield in one but not in both. Um, yes. A spear. A spear, that's right. She's got a spear there and a spear there. This box would tell them an awful lot of, about us because... Back at school, an analogy with plastic containers it. reminds well, children how artefacts can reveal spread. information about a particular spread. era. And also, the fact it says reduced fat might give them an indication as to how we view our diet. <gasps> We're going to play at being archaeologists this morning and we are going to put together some of our pots. I have put in these envelopes bits of pots. You are going to put them together. So what sort of questions will we ask ourselves once we've put our pot together, Gabriel? Why are they using what they're using? Yes. What material it's made of. What material it's made of. Yes. What they're wearing. What they're wearing. Can you start now, please? And we've got Brits on the face. Uh, the, the reason they made so many clay pots was because clay was in abundance. To relate that to the way we produce plastic these days is, uh, gives them an idea of it, their pots weren't kept in glass cases, that their pots were, were used for every, in every aspect of their lives. Yes, 
this is the story of Heracles and the twelve um, and the twelve loaves, isn't it? Yeah. Because the king is hiding in the pot, isn't he? The king of Scots hide his head. I know. Then, yeah. Although art and history form the basis of this activity. Bernadette makes incidental references to other areas of learning to reinforce previous study. What's the plot then? If it's, if it's the same on both sides, what do we call that? It's a line of symmetry, isn't it? It's symmetrical, so both sides are the same. Look up at that plot there, which says number 10 on it. Would you say that plot is symmetrical? Yes, if we were to cut it in half, both sides would match, wouldn't they? Good. And that's Theseus, who kills the Minotaur. There he is having one adventure. To illustrate how the Greeks told stories through art and everyday objects, Richard draws a comparison with a more modern and very different form of visual narrative, the cartoon strip. In this story, this part of the story in The Snowman, how does Raymond Briggs show us? Time has gone by between that picture and that picture. Because the snowman keeps on getting more and more body parts. He keeps getting more and more body parts. So every time something new happens, what does Raymond Briggs give us? Another picture. Another picture. OK. The ancient Greeks almost never used comic strips in their, on their pots or in their sculpture. What the Greeks preferred to do was to tell a story using just one picture. And that's what we're going to look at now. Okay? So here's With a story the use of pictures you. on pots, Richard and the Odysseus children identify key episodes Cyclops. within the Who epic the and story? complex tale of Odysseus. Which moment in the story can you see in the picture? Uh, yes. The men sticking, <coughs> sticking their swords in, into the Cyclops' eye. Yeah, not the swords. They don't stick a sword in his eye. What? They stick the pole in his eye, that's right. There's Odysseus, there's the Cyclops, there's another of his men. There's the pole going into his eye, red hot. OK. In this picture, the Cyclops is drinking the wine, isn't he? Look, there's his drinking cup. But hold on a minute. Did he drink his wine at the same time as he was blinded or before? When did that happen? When did he drink the wine? Yeah. Before. And so he shouldn't be drinking wine in this picture, should he? And this is how the ancient Greeks told a story using one picture. They would put things in the picture that, remind, that didn't really belong there, that belong to a different part of the story. And that's how they did it. Can we read it together? He went into the Bernadette's own Ariadne storyboarding exercise in the classroom is a chance to work on some core objectives within literacy. The children identify key episodes in another Greek myth, sequence them and retell an extended narrative in their own words. Who would like a go of putting them in the right order? Go for it. Bea. Excellent. Well done, Bear. That's right. Both teacher and pupils are enjoying the wealth of information and interactive opportunities available on the subject of Greece on the World Wide Web. Right, the Olympia, the, the temple, the place where the, the games took place. To reinforce ideas of cultural continuity, change and influence, Year 4 will present their findings on a Venn diagram. The Greeks believe that their gods particularly love to see strong, fit, graceful human bodies. With the 2012 London Olympics already exciting many youngsters, teachers are already beginning to find that the origins of the Games in Athens have an extra appeal. Chariot races. Any other event that's different to the Olympics of today? Um, wrestling. Do we not have wrestling today? Do we have wrestling today? Yes. Yes. So the Spartans believe in a race of really strong, healthy people. 
Do you think it was an easy life? Finding out how people, young and old, lived in states like Sparta and Athens challenges pupils to consider different values and beliefs, so links with areas of citizenship are strong. Where did this take place? Where were they sent? To go to a camp to be soldiers. To be soldiers, that's right. So their hair would be shaved up. Do you know what else happened to them in the camp, Jacob? They have to steal their food. Right, what about Athens? What kind of life did the boys and girls have in Athens? Was it the same? Can you tell me, Svetlana, what um, life was like in Athens for boys? They went to a kind of... They were taught, weren't they? Now, we know what kind of government there was in Athens. What kind a comparison of, of the rights of men, women and children in uh, different parts of ancient Greece fired up the children before they were asked to produce some extended pieces of writing. I um, imagined in my head that I was um, an ancient Greek woman in Athens. A woman's place isn't at the loom. It is important that men know that women can do more than men think. Some women are poets. In fact, some women are very famous poets. There's quite a difference because now women are allowed to go out whenever, whenever they want. and. No, and in ancient Greece they couldn't do that thing. I think you see children coming to life when they're faced with what the values are and the beliefs of these people. It's not fair. How come I don't get to go out? Slave, get me some food. How come I don't get to vote? Because you're a woman. I don't care. Still not allowed to vote. I'm a slave. Can I vote? Yes. Yes. No. It's very important for, for children to try and get inside the heads of these ancient people. And I think that children love learning all the little minutiae of life, what people had for breakfast, what kinds of clothes they wore. Ancient Greece has an enduring appeal for children and its natural links with citizenship, literacy and art can result in fruitful ways for teachers to cut across the curriculum. I can under fully understand and I do have friends who find this subject tedious or were taught in a way that put them off for life. So I think that um, if they were teaching the subject this idea of using the museum as a starting point, I think, would bring the subject into a whole new dimension for them, and perhaps they might even change the way they teach it. Have you ever seen heart-shaped leaves? The good thing is the sto all the stories are interesting and you can learn a big thing about them, and the thing that I don't like is... Well, nothing, really. I just... I like ancient Greece and... What I dislike is that um, the women have to stay in the house all day, but I would like to be able to boss people around, boss the slaves around. What I dislike is that when they show their bodies on the, on the pots and I really don't like it. <laughs>